this most recent drop uh, in gold specifically uh, has taken most of the secondary market metal you know, off the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, gold Eagle premiums, while not quite uh, trading at the mint cost of 3% in the secondary market, gold, gold Eagles are now trading uh, well above 2%, and this is the highest level they've been trading at uh, at any time in 2018. Mm-hmm. And one of the key factors, not only for the increase in demand over the last 30 to 45 days, but the market has now reached levels where those that were looking to sell no longer appear terribly interested in doing so, Mm -hmm. um, which is, which is a good sign. So the, the pressure of physical liquidations, at least at the moment has been removed from the marketplace Mm -hmm. and thus premiums are moving higher, despite the fact that gold and silver platinum and palladium as well, continue to be pressured as you know in their outright price are you tired of overpaying for your gold silver and platinum bullion coins and bars then visit sdbullion.com today sd bullion was recently named the 177th fastest growing company in the united states by inc magazine This is because they offer the absolute lowest prices in the industry and follow up with over-the-top customer service. So what are you waiting for? Go to sdbullion.com today and join more than 60,000 happy investors that save money on every precious metals purchase they make. Hello and welcome to this week's Metals and Markets Wrap. I'm your host, James Anderson of SD Bullion. Uh, We are recording this Thursday, August 23rd, 2018 at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. With us this week is Roy Friedman. He's a highly experienced bullion market veteran, uh, U.S. Mint AP, and president of Manfra, Tordella & Brooks. Roy, thanks for coming on this week. Thank you, James. Always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, of course, we're going to get to discussing the current state of physical bullion markets, you know, the current supply and demand forces, product premiums, etc. But just to begin, I'd like to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself, give listeners out there some insight as to, you know, your career in the precious metals markets and just a bit of background on who you are. Well, by, by doing so, I'm going to let everybody know how old I am, uh, which is not something I seem to be very fond of doing lately, but uh, I'll give it a go. Uh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been in the market uh, since uh, 1980. Mm-hmm. Uh, my career uh, began in New York, uh, working on what is now referred to as the old uh, commodities trading floor in uh, Four World Trade Center, uh, where I was a clerk uh, for a company uh dealing in gold futures. Um, uh, I did that for a couple of years uh, and then uh, spent uh, much of the next uh, three decades uh, working uh, outside of the futures industry, uh, uh, being a trader uh, and uh, uh, and a a market maker in physical precious metals, um, mostly uh, coins and bars, which is uh, what I currently still do as president of uh, Manfred Tordella and Brooks. So uh, I guess moving on to the big question of the moment, obviously last week we had a, a huge down uh, downward force in the spot prices for gold and silver and other precious metals. Obviously with silver dipping below $15 an ounce, I think there was a lot of bargain buyers out there and I'm sure you saw huge demand uh, just as we did last week. So I just wanted to touch base with you on, you know, what you saw and what you're seeing right now. And as far as, um, you know, as far as supply and demand, et cetera. You know, I, I, you know as we have seen, uh, you know, for much of calendar year 2018, uh, our business, our collective business, uh, your business and, uh, and MTV's business. And uh, I trust for just about everybody else in uh, our corner of the, of the precious metals industry. Uh, we've seen increases in our trading activity uh, when gold prices uh, and silver prices have moved lower. Uh, rallies, for the most part, have not been sustained, uh, and um, most astute buyers uh, are on the sidelines waiting for the market to move lower and reach a price point where they're comfortable uh, investing or for the first time or perhaps dollar cost averaging um, you know, as they build a uh, a larger portfolio of, uh, of investments. Uh, in our case, uh, there has clearly been a, uh, very, 
a big surge uh, uh, in demand uh, beginning a couple of months ago when uh, when gold um, uh, headed down towards 1300. Uh, it brought about a very significant uh, bit of buying, um, and it appears as though uh, every fifty dollars down, uh, there is again a significant uh, increase uh, in demand. Um, the biggest, uh, certainly the biggest jump in demand uh, and the greatest increase in trading activity uh, in 2018 has occurred uh, just over the course of the last couple of weeks, uh, with silver uh, breaking below uh, fifteen dollars and uh, and gold. Uh, breaking below 1,200, um, and this has clearly been uh, this this has clearly been uh, met by uh, a dramatic increase in um, demands from all facets of the market, uh, uh, from your largest uh, institutional uh, players who in, who are participating in the physical market uh, to first-time uh, retail-type buyers who are, are now looking at. The entry point for gold and silver, and saying this is a price that I am uh, interested in uh, getting into the market. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we've seen a broad, ba- a broad-based increase uh, in our entire customer base uh, who, who have uh, recently uh, begun buying gold and silver again. Right. So I, you know, ever since I've been in this industry, uh, we met, started doing business together in the summer of 2008. So it's been a, just over a decade now, roughly about a decade that we've worked together in this industry. And I've known you personally. And, um, you know, throughout that last 10 years, I've never recalled a time where premiums have been this thin and premium volatility has been this flat pretty much since Basically, since late 2015, early 2016, when we visited spot prices around this price points that we're at now, I mean, it's basically been kind of calm until obviously recently with this drop. In between that time, there's been a huge amount of secondary market products that have come back. There's been some weak hands that have obviously sold back a lot of their gold. Some have sold back silver, and that has helped to compress the premiums, obviously. What's going on on the secondary market? Are there is there much inventory left that you know of, or is the secondary market inventory starting to be sold away? Is it is it starting to you know basically uh, become non-existent as uh, as perhaps you know I'm I'm thinking it may become. Yeah, well, your observ- your your observation and summary is spot on. Uh, uh, much of uh, perhaps uh, the the greatest amount of uh, sellbacks. Um, in the physical market uh, that I've ever seen in my career uh, took place in the March, April, May, or somewhere in that three month period where, uh, where uh, gold Eagles um, were actually trading uh, at our level, uh, you know, at the primary, the mm-hmm. primary market making level, as I refer to that right. coins were trading um, at virtually no premium. Mm-hmm. Um, and there may have been a couple of days in there where, uh, MTB and uh, was buying coins back uh, below spot. Right. Um, had you asked me you know, a couple of months earlier, and perhaps throughout much of our career, and, and certainly during the ten years that we've known each other, would I have ever uh, predicted or foreseen a, a day or a period where premiums would collapse like that, uh, with gold eagles leading the charge down? I would have said no. Yeah. Um, it, but certainly this period during this year, um, it found several investors, um, well, certainly more than several, it found uh, you know, a, a whole large uh, group of, uh, of investors who had clearly purchased metal at uh, previous times and perhaps in some cases at uh, levels uh, many hundreds of dollars higher than gold was currently trading at. Uh, you know, either side of the end of Q1 2018. Um, and these investors decided at that point in time, they were going to, um, you know, adjust their asset allocations and, uh, and exit the physical precious, physical precious metals market. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, well, uh, unfortunately for them, you know, those investments did not prove to be, uh, you know, good investments. Mm-hmm. Um, my 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 longer term belief is those that were that that were astute enough to be buying metal over the last couple of months will reap the be- will will reap the benefits um, you know, as I believe uh, firmly believe uh, 
you know, gold still has a, a very important place in, uh, in everyone's um, portfolio and, um, you know, will will pay the dividends, uh, you know, as gold moves higher uh, in, in the future as, uh, you know, circumstances, which we will t- probably talk about in this conversation, mm-hmm. uh, begin, th- begin to change the investment uh, uh, portfolios of many for uh, the times that are likely to change ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, but to specifically answer your question, um, this most recent drop uh, in gold specifically uh, has taken most of the secondary market metal you know, off the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, gold Eagle premiums, while not quite uh, trading at the mint cost of 3% in the secondary market, Gold, gold Eagles are now trading uh, well above 2%, and this is the highest level they've been trading at. Uh, at any time in 2018. Mm -hmm. And one of the key factors, not only for the increase in demand over the last 30 to 45 days, but the market has now reached levels where those that were looking to sell no longer appear terribly interested in doing so, Mm -hmm. um, which is, which is a good sign. So the, the pressure of physical liquidations, at least at the moment, has been removed from the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And thus premiums are moving higher, despite the fact that gold and silver, platinum and palladium as well, continue to be pressured as, you know, in their outright price. Now you touched upon um, being surprised about this. I would would feel the same exact way. If you had asked us in 2011, you know, obviously gold and silver prices had gotten ahead of themselves a little bit. But, you know, are we going to move sideways and downward for the next six years? Uh, most people, most, you know, seven years now, most people would have said not not possible. Maybe three, four years they'll be, you know, but it, this is stretched out. It's very long in the tooth now as far as the consolidation that we've had since. Um, you know, I, and just to touch back in, in terms of like, you know, when I first started in this business, you know, the price action, a lot of people, they're saying that, you know, right now in the metals markets, you see a lot of downward pressure and not just precious metals, but also base metals. A lot of them are, are pointing to it, feeling almost as if this is like a 2008 scenario. Obviously, 2008 was a little bit different. In the spring of 2008, we had gold and silver on a tear. Gold had gotten over $1,000 an ounce. Silver had hit it over $21 an ounce. And then we had a huge sell-off that occurred and then throughout summer and into fall with the financial crisis, we had gold spot hit near $700 an ounce. We had silver spot get just below $9 an ounce by the end of that year. Um, you know, what, as far as you, you, you obviously were in the very center of, of, uh, of the physical market at the moment, at least on the Western world. What was that like? Because obviously we had products that were in shortage. We had premiums that had you know, gapped out and exploded. We had premiums on Silver Eagles that were selling on eBay at 80% over spot. So just take us back, if you don't mind, what that experience was like for you. Well, it was, uh, you know, on many levels, it was uh, you know, one of several highlights uh, you know, in my career. Mm-hmm. It was a, uh, it was a u- unique experience to be uh, you know, in the middle of um, you know, one of the, uh, the most talked about periods uh, in the bullion market, um, certainly since I entered the market uh, in 1980. Uh, trading activity was at uh, levels um, most companies had never seen seen uh, previously. Right. Uh, ticket count, uh, ch- daily trading volume was uh, extraordinary. Um, you know, customers uh, not not for lack of providing great service, but customers were simply you know, waiting on hold to trade because there was such uh, an incredible amount of uh, of buying going on. Um, you know, there weren't enough hands on board to uh, to answer uh, every phone call. Uh, uh, you know, on the second ring, shall we say? Right. Um, it was a very it was a very exciting it was a very exciting period. Uh, it, it was uh, also uh, you know for many you know involved in the industry. It was also uh, a very profitable period and. As I think we all know, who for those of us that have been in the market, uh, the precious metals industry for uh, an extended period of time, yourself included, mm-hmm. now being in the market for 10 years plus, uh, the precious metals industry is a very cyclical industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, when business is good, it tends to be very good. Mm-hmm. And when business is not so good, it really tends to be 
be not so good. <laughs> so, um, you know, so for, you know, for many people, uh, myself included, you know, the years leading up to the boom years, as we actually, you know, still refer to them as, mm-hmm. you know, those previous couple of years had been very difficult, challenging years for most market participants. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, besides the euphoria of the market getting hot, it was a, um, you know, it, it was certainly a breath of fresh air coming and following a period where, uh, you know, the industry in general was going through a rather difficult phase. And so just looking at it, where we stand today, obviously, you know, virtually every asset class outside of precious metals uh, and basically commodities, uh, virtually every other asset class appears to be in some sort of bubble you know, when you get right down to valuations on a historic time frame. Do you think that if we have a pop in some of these bubbles, for instance, the equity market, if we see a large rollover, for instance, today, Trump was... I, I saw a headline. I couldn't believe it. He said, uh, you know, if he gets impeached, the stock market's going to roll over. You know, I actually uh, saw that as well. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want the conversation to get too political. Of course, and, uh, of course. Right. I, I'll, I'll keep my political <laughs> views to myself, uh, right. if, if you don't mind, no even problem. during this time. Con- you know, I'm not sure uh, I would agree with that singular statement, regardless <laughs> of who was sitting in the big chair in Washington. Um, right. Uh, I don't believe that would be, I, I don't believe that would actually be uh, you know the correct scenario to play out right. uh, if uh, you know if the president uh, any sit, sitting president is going to be uh, you know impeached uh, and I'm not talking about how it's going to affect you know every asset class mm-hmm. I'm just simply making reference to how it's going to affect our industry mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, while, while while the president may have been making specific reference to the stock market, one one would have to assume uh, that gold would be a um, an insurance certainly an insurance uh, investment for uh, many. Um, you know, if the world starts spinning very differently because of an an impending impeachment. Yeah, it's just I guess a question in terms of you know you have obviously stock market potential rollover. You have. Um real estate that it's, you know, in various cities, it's high, much higher than it was in 2006, seven. Uh, and you have a bond market, you know, it's obviously, uh, you know, the, the interest rates are going up. So, you know, the question is, you know, how, how further, how much further does this go until one of these asset classes starts rolling over? And so it's just a question of, I guess, time, you know, obviously, we've sat through seven years of downward prices for precious metals. And, you know, what is it that's going to snap this thing back? And what will that look like? I mean, I, I am of the opinion that that 2008 experience was only half half of what we'll end up seeing. We, we, we basically called time out um, with all the QE that, that went on and all the various, um, you know, things that the Federal Reserve and other central banks have done since. Um, and so the question, I, I suppose, is do you think that you will uh, see another 2008 like scenario and, and, you know, toward the end of uh, maybe this decade or into the next? The answer is 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 yes and no. I yeah. think the uh, I, I I think the likelihood of a um, a financial calamity uh, being caused by one of the great uh, you know Wall Street or international uh, uh, broker dealers or or bank slash trading companies uh, uh, going under um, you know like a Lehman, like a Bear Stearns, uh, others that were you know, rumored to be in deep trouble. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see that again, um, at least, uh, you know, in, 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 in the next, uh, in the next cycle, mm-hmm. in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. What I do believe is that there is for the first time in quite some time, there are better tailwinds blowing behind the precious metals industry and gold as, and gold, silver, platinum, palladium as an asset class, and there are headwinds ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that for, you know, for several reasons. We have a political scenario uh, in Washington that certainly looks like uh, you know, it, could, it could change dramatically very quickly. Mm-hmm. Perhaps it begins as early as the midterm elections, which are uh, 60 odd days away. And um, you know, this, this all of a sudden looks like it should be supportive uh, uh, of of uh, the gold market and gold prices. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an international, you know, uh, political scene 
that is always, uh, you know, walking on eggshells. Who knows, you know, what, what the next uh, international event, uh, um, geopolitical event, uh, you know, causes uh, precious metals to go up. And as you made reference, we have certain asset classes which are at lofty levels that just a couple of years ago would have been almost difficult to predict, even for the most optimistic stock picker or asset class uh, right. picker. Um, one of the things that I've always observed, and you know, throughout my career and throughout, you know, all of the you know the investing that I do mm -hmm. for myself, mm -hmm. you know, just like it, just like all of your listeners and just like you, mm -hmm. I have a I have a diversified portfolio, mm -hmm. and and I look at some of the asset classes of which I'm participating in, and I'm looking for exit strategies because mm -hmm. I'm because. If nothing else, history has shown you that all markets are cyclical. Mm -hmm. You know, they go up, they go down, and I'm not professing to be, you know, the best stock picker or the best timer in the market, but it's important to recognize nothing moves up forever. Right. And that that could be the S and P 500 in a broad sense. It could be. You know, Amazon stock or Apple set or Apple stock, you know, as a specific subject matter, mm -hmm. you know, the point, the point being there will come a time and I believe it's much closer than you know, some of your TV commentators and writers, you know, you know, lead you to believe it may be mm -hmm. that there is going to be, you know, a rather significant rotation out of the asset classes, which right now remain in great vogue. Mm -hmm. um, and, the rotation out of those asset classes should and will be, in my view, a very significant contributor to precious metals prices beginning a climb, which I believe will last a couple of years. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, with that being said, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I wouldn't tell you that today's price of gold is going to be the low. Mm -hmm. It may go another 5% lower. It may go another 10% lower. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. You know, everybody has an opinion. But I'm firmly convinced that the upside for potential for gold and silver, platinum and palladium, perhaps to a lesser degree, um, well, palladium anyway, platinum, to, you know, in pretty much in the same view. Mm -hmm. you know, the upside potential, in my view, at these current levels, your upside potential is significantly greater than your downside risk. Right. You know, and that's how I look at the market, right. not trying to time it to be, to pick the top and pick the bottom because no, nobody can do that on a consistent basis. Right. So you're talking more of a long-term asymmetric trade where the downside risk is limited compared to the upside potential on a, on a medium to long-term basis. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. You know, I, I continue to look, I continue to look at, you know, investing as a, as a, a long-term you know, endeavor, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think there are several people and perhaps, you know, some of your clients are, are part of them. Mm -hmm. You know, they have some percentage of their portfolio that maybe they're trading with, you know, on short, you know, and they're looking for short-term pops in any given market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the great likelihood is, you know, the, the clients that, we're all catering to in our corner of the financial community are more focused on a longer term price objective than a short term windfall. Yeah, I would, you know, I would the, agree with that. Me, you know, meaning your client who buys a, a couple of mint sealed boxes of silver eagles tomorrow mm -hmm. you know, is unlikely to sell them back to you if the market runs up a couple of dollars. <laughs> you know, that investor is probably more likely to buy more. Right. And, you know, that's. You know, that's the different type of focus that the investors that we are doing business with, uh, you know, in the supply chain process uh, are catering to. I, I appreciate you humoring us and, and taking us back to when you started in the business. I, you know, the people who talked about the difference between the 1970s and 80 gold, you know, gold, silver, palladium, platinum, uh, precious metal peaks in 1980 versus, you know, this 21st century mania, basically, where since 2000 you know there's been a lot of interest in precious metals and not just in the western world like in the 1980 go around it you have now asia obviously involved and you have russia and other sovereign nations so 
if you if you wouldn't mind just uh, giving us a little bit of a you know you've seen both kind of up hand and close what 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 are the biggest differences that you see? The, the one thing that always pops into my mind, and one thing that I always share, you know, when I'm telling a story or having an interview or giving a little lecture like we're doing together this afternoon, is mm-hmm. when I got into the market, gold was considered an alternative asset class. Mm-hmm. It was, it was shunned by, you know, Wall Street purists. Okay. It was viewed as something out there in left field that, you know, you know the, the traditional, you know, investment banks uh, were not participating in. And certainly if they were, it would, may have been on a proprietary level, but it wasn't something that they were offering uh, to their clients. Mm-hmm. You know, jump forward you know, precious metals, you know, jump forward, you know, to the last 15 years beginning, you know, in 2002 to 2003, where gold was beginning to show signs of the recovery that, you know, you know, came a few years later. Mm -hmm. Gold is now viewed as a fully legitimized, accepted asset class by just about everybody I can think of, you know, I'm sure even the wall street journal for all intent and purposes has now has now, and has for a long time accepted, uh, physical precious metals, gold ETFs, um, the futures industry, um, as a legitimate asset class and a, you know, a proper, um, you know, a proper component of, uh, of a well diversified portfolio. Um, when I, when I got, into the business, you know, an active, an, an active day in the market in the U S paled in comparison to what an active day in the market is now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't cite an exact figure for you, but you know, on a 24 hour global basis, you know, I would say, you know, gold probably trades you know, 500% more. Yeah ounce volume, forget about dollar volume because mm-hmm. the, the market, of course, was much lower then. But I would say, you know, ounce volume has probably increased 500% wow. uh, and maybe more mm-hmm. since I since I got into the business. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that's the, you know, that's the key right there. You know, that shows you that, you know, the market is now broadly accepted and being, and, and, and participation comes from, you know, our first time buyers who call up to buy a hundred or 200 or a box of silver Eagles, whatever mm-hmm. the quantity may be mm-hmm. up to some of the largest hedge funds in the market who continue to participate a- and trade in the physical precious metals market mm-hmm. you know, on top of, on top of which we have gold ETS now, right. which, you know, which are, you know, certainly another, another opportunity and vehicle for investors to participate. But just the fact that the gold ETFs trade so actively and are so heavily promoted by some of the, the broker dealer clearing firms, you know, just adds another you know, legitimacy factor to the precious metals industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that and that in a nutshell is really the difference between you know, forget about when I started, but just simply, you know, over the course of the last 15 years. Mm-hmm. Well, I appreciate you taking the time with us, Roy. Is there anything else that you uh, wanted to uh, get across to our listeners before we close it up? As always, we at MTB, uh, as part of the MKS PAMP group, uh, uh, we greatly appreciate uh, the relationship uh, that we have with uh, SD Bullion. And um, thank you to all the listeners. Today is how I'll end the uh, and this interview. Well, great, Roy. Thank you for coming on for this week's Metals and Markets Wrap, and uh, we'll talk soon. Good. All the best. Speak to you soon. 